Hey, you guys, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am live right now. So come on in and join me. Tonight, we're going to be talking about something that's really interesting, and that is we're going to be talking about your soul. Because deep within you, there is a second version of you, a version of you that lives forever. You know, there's a lot of you guys who ask me about what actually happens when we die. How are you able to communicate with the spirit world? How are spirits able to communicate with us? And how do we become spirits? Well, first of all, the most interesting thing about this and about death and dying is that deep within you, your spirit is already there. Your spirit is in your body right now. It's the reason why you feel a closeness that you do with people. It's the reason why you feel a closeness with animals. It's the reason why you have psychic feelings. You have premonitions. You have intuitive feelings. That's because deep within you, your spirit's already there. So when you die, what's so interesting is, is that you just leave this world and enter the spirit world and you do that with your soul. So I want to talk to you guys all about this. I want to talk to you about how your soul is created, where your soul comes from, and what actually happens with when you die. What actually happens to your soul and why do spirits communicate the way that they do? You know, this is the most interesting thing because when you learn how your soul works, you learn how your loved ones communicate with you, why they communicate with you, and you also learn what happens when you pass on. And you also start to realize why you pick up on psychic thoughts, why you pick up on psychic feelings, why feelings are so strong with us humans and with pets and animals. Because what spirit tells me is that first, everybody has a soul. I have a soul. You have a soul. Pets have souls. Animals have souls. And that's the reason why we feel so close to animals. We can feel animals' pain. You can tell if an animal is sick. You can tell if an animal is a good animal or if the animal is, you know, one that's going to bite you or hurt you, right? It's because that living being has a soul. So first of all, I see so many of you guys tuning in right now. I'm going to say hello. I see Robin is here. She goes, I need this tonight. Well, I'm glad you're here, Robin, and that you caught me. Oh, Kim Day is here on Facebook. Hey, Kim, I'm so glad that you're here. I see Katniss is here on Instagram, and Jane Musk is here on Instagram as well. Oh, Andrea Farago is here as well. And I also see, I read and Andrea a couple times. I read her mom and her dad came through. I also see Lee is here. I see Kitty's here. I see Christian's here. I see Denise is here. Hey, everyone, come on in, come on in, share this video right now. We're going to get right into it. And while we're waiting for a few more people to join, I want you to know that next week I'm heading back on tour and you can come and meet me where I'm going to be giving live readings up close and personal. So if you want a reading from me, make sure you're at one of these events. Lynn, Massachusetts, I'm coming on March 7th. Welch, Minnesota, I'm coming on March 9th. Waukegan, Illinois, March 16th. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'll be there on March 16th. Altoona, Iowa, where are my, all my Iowa fans? I'll be there on March 17th. I'm also coming to Stanford, Connecticut on April 4th. Peekskill, New York on April 5th. Baltimore, Maryland, April 6th. Gary, Indiana, April 11th. And I'm also coming to Ashland, Kentucky. Benslehem, Pennsylvania. London, Ontario, Canada. Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Winnipeg, Manito Manitoba, I think it is, Canada. Sorry, I haven't been there yet. Keene, New Hampshire, Concord, New Hampshire, Sonoquay, Snow, Snoqualmie, Washington. I'm also coming to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, Nova Scotia, Canada, and so many other places. Tickets are available right now on my website, meetmattfraser.com. Each of those events are a 90-minute experience where I read person after person after person and connect you guys with your loved ones on the other side. So just like you see the readings here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you can come and meet me in person. Tickets are up on my website right now. Oh, my God, Barb says that she's coming to see me in Milwaukee. I love that. And she's coming online. That's the best way to do it because I got to tell you, you can attend online and hear from one spirit and come into an event and hear from another spirit. Because what's really cool is, is that you have multiple people that try to reach you at different times. So first of all, oh, thank you. Thank you, Les, uh, Les West says, Manitoba. Thank you. Thank you. I always forget how to pronounce that. So first of all, what is your soul? Well, deep within you, there is a second version of yourself. Deep within you, there is an energy version of yourself. And your soul is so important. 
because it's the version of you that can never be destroyed. Hold on, let me put my chair up a little bit. For some reason, I'm sinking here. So it's the version of you that can never be destroyed. And it's also a version of you that can't come, that can't come into contact with the things that our body comes into contact with. So for example, your soul is shielded from illness. Your soul is shielded from, um, is, that, is that even a word, shielded? You know what I'm saying? Your, your soul is shielded. Is that protected, I should say? I don't know if shielded is a word. I, I just made that up. But your soul is protected against illness. Your soul is protected against memory loss. Your soul is protected against addiction. And your soul is protected against alcoholism. So I'm telling you this for a reason. Because your soul is the true version of you. Your soul, deep within you, is the version of you without hate, without anger, without pain, without any of those things that our bodies go through. Because here in this world, we're in our bodies and our bodies go through a lot. We go through physical illness. We go through mental illness. We go through addictions. We all have a certain struggle that we go through here in this world. But at the end of the day, it's a, less, it's a life le lesson. And what makes it a life lesson is that we don't carry that pain, that illness, all of those things that we go through from this world into the new world. We actually go and only deal with that here on earth. When your soul transition on, when a person passes away, what's so beautiful is when their soul goes from this world to the other side, they get rid of everything. They leave behind the pain. They leave behind the addiction. They leave behind the mental illness. Anything that they felt here in this world that was attached to their body, not to their soul, is left. And that's why even souls, right, that come to me and speak to me on the other side, that suffered here in this world from really terrible illnesses like Alzheimer's or dementia or mental illness are fully functional on the other side, meaning that they can remember, they can speak clearly, think clearly, their minds aren't cluttered as they were here in this world. And what's so beautiful is this, is that memories are actually stored in two places. Here on earth, we rely on our brain to carry our memories, right? As we're going through every day where we have to rely on our brain to remember where we put our car keys, what we ate for dinner last night, where we were two weeks ago, what we did last last Valentine's Day. It's actually funny because Alexa and I were recently just having Valentine's Day dinner with one another. And we were going back and bed together, right? Seven years now. And we're like, you know, let's do something fun. Let's think about all the past Valentine's Days that we had with one another. Let's think about everything that we did on all the past Valentine's Days. And you guys, I could not remember like, listen, don't, don't go there. Don't get, don't get me in trouble. All right. All the women out there are going to be careful what I say and be careful what I say. Cause next thing you know, you guys come at me, but I could not remember. Like I could remember the last three, but I couldn't remember like the, like the ones in, in like, I don't know. There was some in between that I still can't remember to be honest with you. And you know, I was thinking about this and I'm like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Like, this is what happens when you start to get old. You start to remember all of these things. Oh, excuse me, you start to forget all about these things. But the thing is, is that when talking to the other side, and this is what's so beautiful, when talking with the other side, yeah, my, my as you can tell I'm getting nervous. <laughs> when talking to, because you guys wrap me up. It's so funny. If I say something on here, if I say something on here, you would not believe how many people rush over to Alexa's Instagram account and they're like, oh, that was on Facebook Live today and the baby was crying. Matt was doing this. And the baby and the baby was doing this. Matt was, and you guys always wrap me up. So I have to be careful what I say on here because next thing you know, you go, you guys go and wrap me up on Alexa's Instagram. I know who you are. <laughs> but anyway, I think, actually I don't know who you are. She doesn't tell me, but she says, so and so said you were doing this while the baby was crying today. Um, all right. Anyway, long story short, what I want you to know is that memories are stored in two places. They're stored while we're here on earth in our head. And then they're also eternally stored in our soul. So every single moment, even the moments you can't remember, the moments when you were a little kid, the moments you were born, the moments that you took your first step, all of those moments are stored also in your soul. And it's actually funny. It's actually funny because when I was watching Royce the other day and I was just looking at him playing and we were having such a great time and I was dragging him down the hallway and he was running after me and then I was running after him. And then next thing you know, like I was tickling him and he was laughing and we were doing all these things. And then I was thinking about, you know, the great time that we had in Disney and the car rides that we bring him on and bringing him out on stage in front of all of you and you guys get to meet him. And I started to get a little bit of a, emotional, you guys, because I was thinking to myself, oh my God, this is so sad. Like this kid is having so much fun. 
we're, we're giving him so much love. We're having all these beautiful memories with him, right? He's only 18 months old, even though he looks older. He's 18 months old. And I'm like, he's never going to remember this. Like when he gets older, he's not going to remember all of these fun times. And I was like, just thinking about how important it is to take pictures and take videos to share with him later on. And, you know, I felt really bad because I'm like, I wish that he would remember all of these beautiful things that we're doing with him. Well, What's so beautiful is this, then I, then I thought about the other side in the afterlife, and I was thinking about how when I talk to your loved ones in spirit and I give a reading, it's very, very typical for your loved ones to come in and to talk about, yes, let's, yes, Lauren, Roy Cerrone, yes, and oh, Christina says, bet you he will. I'll bet you, I'll bet you will. Yes, Christina, I will. Sorry, I read that too fast. But anyway, going back, I was thinking about the souls in heaven and how the souls come back during readings. And it's very typical for your loved ones in spirit to talk about things that happened 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Like, for example, it always takes someone uh, someone by surprise when I'm talking to their dad that died. And maybe their dad, you know, um, passed and he was well into his 90s. And he might talk about things that he did in his 20s or things that he did in his 30s. And the person that I'm reading for will be like, hold on, wait a minute. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, wait. Yes. I remember something like that. Or it's not until they go back through the photo albums or go back through and talk to other family members that they start to remember some of the things that I'm talking about from their loved ones in spirit. Well, you know, this happens a lot during the readings where I'll talk to somebody and they'll bring up things that happened 20, 30, 20, 30 40 years ago. And they'll talk to me as the medium, as if they happened yesterday. Because what's really cool is that when we pass on, all of our memories come back to us in a flash, boom. The moment that you hit heaven, the moment that you go to the other side, all your memories return from the moment that you that that you uh, took 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 your first steps here in this world to the moment that you died. Everything in between circles back around. And what's really cool is that you're able to understand things that you didn't know of here in this world as well. So, for example, when you transition on, your soul remembers how you know every connection that you had, the people that loved you, the people that you loved them, the people that hurt you, the people that you hurt, so on and so forth. Your soul is like, I don't know how to explain it. Your soul is almost like a database that's keeping track of all of this information, all the connections, all the people that are around you, everything. And then one day when you pass on, all of that information comes right back to you. So what I want you to know is this, is that when it comes to the other side and the afterlife, that's the purpose of your soul. That's why you have a soul. It's because here in this uh, in here on earth, you're going to go through some ish. You're going to go through breakups. You're going to go through hardships. You're going to go through emotional times. You might go through addiction. You might go through any of these things. But what's so beautiful is that no matter what you go through here in this world, no matter what the challenge, what the struggle is, it becomes a life lesson because at the end of the day, you don't take that with you to heaven. You don't take the pain. You don't take the illness. You don't take any of those things. You just take your soul. So what's so beautiful is when I talk to your loved ones in heaven, people often ask me, what, are your soul, what does your soul look like? Well, your soul looks just like you do, but it's the version of you without pain, without illness, and it's the version of you that you most resonate with. So for example, Let's say you lost a finger and a toe here in this world because of illness. You know, well, when I connect with your loved ones on the other side, they'll have their fingers and toes back. But let's say, for example, this just happened the other day. I was reading for this, for this family. And when I was connecting with this, this woman, her uncle had passed away and his hand was all deformed. And when I was connecting with her, when I was connecting with his soul and spirit, he showed me his hand and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, this is man that's coming through. And he showed me his hand was all deformed. And she was like, oh my God, that was my uncle. That was my uncle. And, you know, it's funny because in spirit, he could have a regular hand, but he chose to come back and to, you know, present, it, present himself in spirit with that deformed hand because of the fact that it was him. That's what made him him. That's what made him unique. Well, there is a version of you that's unique. and it's it, your version of you is different than anyone else. And it's your appearance. The way that you look is different from anyone else. And it's what your soul looks like. So if I laid, right, like, for example, let's take, let's take an icon. If there was an icon that passed away, like Marilyn Monroe, and I laid out all the pictures in front of me. And I said, pick the picture that best resonates with you. That is your true essence, right? The picture that she picks is most likely the soul that is what most likely her soul's going to look like on the other side. 
Because when we come back in the afterlife, your soul automatically goes to the version that you view yourself as. Does that make sense? So it's not like you're in heaven and you're like, because I, I, I talk about this in other videos. I talk about you get to pick what you look like in heaven. But it's not like you're in heaven and you're like in a closet and you're like, okay, what version of me do I want today? Do I want the fat version? Do I want the skinny version? Do I want the uh, version where I had a lot of muscles? Or I want the version that I'm in the thong, <laughs> right? So I want the version with piercings. Do I, do I don't? It's how do you see you? How do you see you without looking in the mirror, right? If you close your eyes and look at what you look like, right? How do you see yourself? Is it that you see yourself on your wedding day? Do you see yourself as being 35 years old? Do you see yourself with less wrinkles? Do you see yourself with wrinkles? Do you see yourself with blonde hair, right? Alex K, Alex K is like me. Alex K says only the gorgeous version, <laughs> right? And, and Ayan says, well, what about birthmarks, right? Well, it depends on you. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself when you close your eyes? Are those birthmarks there? Are those birthmarks not there, right? Do you have long hair? Do you have short hair? How do you see yourself? Well, when you transition onto the other side, how you see yourself is what is shown to me as a medium, what's shown to your family, and what's shown and what's shown to yourself when you get to the other side. So, for example, the man that I was connecting with who had the deformed hands, when I connected with him in spirit, he chose to, to, to hold on to that deformity, not because not because of the fact that, you know, he couldn't have a normal hand in heaven. It's because it was who he was. It was his character. It was his uniqueness. He could use his hand. It was just extra large. And it made him him. So the thing is, is that you don't you lose your identity on the other side. And I'm going to I'm going to share with you something. I just wrote about this actually in my new book the, that's coming out, the new book that's coming out in August. There was this woman that I was reading for and her mother had passed away. And here in this world, the mother you know, unfortunately she was older and, you know, for many years she had chin hair. She was like an older Italian woman. She had the chin ears here. You know what I'm talking about? If you're Italian, you'll know. I always had the, the Italian, listen, my Italian aunts, they had, they had more hair than the men, I think. <laughs> I think it's an Italian thing. I don't know. But anyway, anyway, she had chin ears. And when I was connected with her on the other side, she came through with her chin hair. She had chin hairs on you guys. And What's so funny, uh, Joy goes, what does this mean? Joy says, chin hairs. You know when you have chin hairs, like like here, like I have, but like longer here? Like, I, I don't know. She must not have known to shave or whatever it is. Um, someone just asked, who just asked me that? Um, <laughs> uh, Karen just asked me, what's the name of your new book that's coming out? So this is the name of the new book. It's called um, Don't Wait Till You're Dead, Spirits Advice from the Afterlife. So. If you want a copy, you can pre-order it right now on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere you buy books. It's called Don't Wait Till You're Dead. It's available to pre-order right now. It comes out in August. And Christina goes, no, not the chin years. Yes, the chin years. So when I was going, when I was going, and <laughs> sorry, goes, not the chin years. Like, all right, all right, all right. Wait a minute now. So anyways, when I went to read her, she showed me she had the chin here. Anyway, long story short, she wasn't ashamed of this. It was something that, you know, was her character, right? Here in this world, everybody used to tease her over a chin here. She knew she had them here in this world. And when she went to the other side, she chose to still hang on to them, right? So what I want you to know is this, is that it's how you view yourself, how your family viewed you, you know, what's unique to you. For example, Marilyn Monroe, she had the, the, the little beauty mark on her face, right? Marilyn Monroe would not be Marilyn Monroe without that beauty mark. Well, on the other side, on the other side, you better believe she's got that beauty mark because it's her own unique characteristic. So that's what I want to share with you guys as well. So when you get to the other side, how you view you is what your soul looks like on the other side. And if you ever want to know what a soul really looks like, if, you, if you're missing your mom or your dad or a sister or a brother and you want to know what they look like in heaven, what I can tell you is, is that if you've ever had a dream of a loved one, and you've dreamt of them, and they're their beautiful self on the other side. What I can tell you is that that's what they look like. How many times do I do readings? And I'll describe your loved ones. And they'll say to me, oh, my God, Matt. Oh, my God. My mom, the same way you're describing her, she just came to me in a dream, and that's how she looked. Or, for example, I was going and um, reading. <laughs> Jessica said she just plucked her chin. Yes. All right, Jess. It's like, you don't have to go and put that out there. You don't have to put that out there. Um, 
But anyways, what I want you to know is that, you know, <laughs> now I get this vision why I can't get out of because of you guys. But anyway, anyway, what I can tell you is this, is that on the other side, you look like the version of you that was happy, that's healthy, that was your best moment in life is what you look like on the other side. And that's what you share with me as a medium. That's what your loved ones share with you when they come and they visit you in dreams and you see them. And that's one of the most beautiful things. When you visit heaven, and that's, that's what the souls tell me, when they leave this world and they transition into heaven and make it to the other side, what's so beautiful is they realize one thing. They realize nobody is sick in heaven. There are no cemeteries in heaven. Everybody's there with one another. They're happy, they're healthy. And even if, even if your illness had gone and affected you in a really tough way, for example, it affected your memory, maybe your illness affected your personality, maybe you had an addiction issue, or maybe you had a depression issue and it changed who you were. On the other side, your loved ones are free from that. And that's the reason why every time I do a reading for somebody who is lost through addiction or suicide or any of those, those really horrible, terrible things, or Alzheimer's or dementia, they come back not only just being happy and healthy, but they come back to the version of them without that pain and suffering that they went through here in this world. So that's the reason why you have a soul. You're born here in this world, a pure soul. Here in this world, when you're first born, you don't know anything but love, right? All you, you don't know how to walk, talk, speak, but as you start to grow into your body here in this world, you start to learn many things. You start to learn love. You start to learn hate, you start to learn jealousy, you learn all of these things, right? Both good things and bad things, but you start off as just being pure. You start off as just being love. You look at a child, all they know is love. When I'm on live with you guys, with my son Royce, all he wants to do is kiss the screen, hug you guys, he loves you guys, right? All he knows is love. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, once he starts going to school, he's gonna start to learn different things. He's gonna start to learn bullying from other kids, what it's like to be bullied. He might pick on other kids. He might get jealous of another kid, right? Unfortunately, it's what we learn here in our bodies. But what's beautiful is, is that our soul still stays intact. When we transition onto the other side, we lose all of those things that were not truly us. Because a lot of times souls didn't wanna be that way. If souls had uh, uh, an issue, for example, let's say here in this world, the soul had an issue like addiction or with alcoholism. They don't want to be that way. You know, they just went down the wrong road. They just went down the wrong path. And I've had many readings where it happens, where somebody will go and come through on the other side. And when they come through from the other side, they will tell me, I no longer have the addictions. Oh my God, I can totally see the love again. I can see the love for my family, for my children, for this, for that. And that's what's so beautiful. And I want to share that with all of you. Because so many times it's really hard, right? It's really hard because when we lose a loved one, we see the physical body dying. We watch somebody take their last breath. We watch someone not be able to breathe. We watch someone not to be able to eat. Or maybe if it's a mental illness that they're going through, like Alzheimer's, dementia, addiction, alcoholism, we start to see them break down. We see them change as a person. But what's so beautiful is that death doesn't delete us. Death changes us back to the way that we were, to the way that we were before we got sick, before we had that issue and before we died. So just something to think about because your soul is truly amazing and your soul is responsible for so much more while you're here in this earth. Your soul is responsible for your psychic ability. When you get those feelings, right? When you get those feelings, like you're sensing something or feeling something psychically, it comes from your soul. When you pick up on someone's emotions and you can feel that they're sick or they're upset or they're mad or they're sad, it comes from your soul. And what's so beautiful is that you exist before you're even born here in this world. Your soul, from what I'm told by the spirit world, is created by God on the other side before you're born here in this, in this, on this earth. So you start off as a soul. You're created by God in heaven, right? You're born here on this earth. And then one day when you pass on and pet and everybody around you, what comes from God goes back to God. We all go back to heaven. And that's the most beautiful thing. And we take, we leave our bodies here with all the illness. And our soul takes flight. It looks just like we do. The only difference is, is that we don't take that pain with us. And Marcia says, this makes so much sense. I'm so happy to hear that. And Gigi, thank you so much for the heart. So what I want you guys to know is this. And Leah has a good question. because Matt, do you think Royce will be a psychic? He's showing a lot of signs, you guys. He is showing a lot of signs. I don't want to jump on it too quick. I don't want to jump on it too quick. But we're going to see. He's, he's definitely connecting. I will tell you that. Um, it all depends on if he, if he hangs on to it, right? Many children between the ages of three and four, you know, will see and hear the departed. Well, going up to the ages of three and four, I should say. But the thing is, is that, you know, what really 
what really determines whether or not they'll hold on to that gift is if they do just that, hold on to it. After three and four years old, there's some children who unfortunately won't sense and feel the departed anymore. But there's some souls that do. And that's what that's what makes us psychic, right? That's what that's what where a psychic kid comes from. Some connections are super strong, some connections aren't. Some, some, you know, uh connections need to be worked on. We're always plugged in. It just depends on if we hold on to the strength of that connection, like we do when we're first born. So it's really amazing. I know. Um, but what I want you to know is this is that if you're tuning in right now, guys, I have some exciting news. Next week, I'm heading back on tour. This is where you can come and meet me. Did you see these dates yet? Next week, March 7th, I'm going to be giving readings in Lynn, Massachusetts. This is my big Massachusetts event where you can come and meet me at the Lynn Auditorium on March 7th. Then I'm coming to Welch, Minnesota. I'll be at the Treasure Island Resort Casino. So at the Resort Casino can't talk today, in Welch, Minnesota. Then I'm coming to Waukegan, Illinois, to the Gen Janice Theater, I think is how you say it. I'm coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I'll be at the Riverside Theater. And I'm also coming to Altoona, Iowa, to Prairie Meadows Casino. I'm coming to Stanford, Connecticut, to the Palace Theater. You guys have been asking me to come to Stanford, Connecticut for years, so now I'm coming. I'll be at the Stanford Theater. I'm coming to Peekskill, New York. I have no idea where the hell that is, but I'm coming. Baltimore, Maryland, I'm coming there. Gary, Indiana, Ashland, Kentucky. You guys have been asking for this one. Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, London, Ontario, Canada, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I'm also coming to Regina, Canada, Nova Scotia, Canada, Keene, New Hampshire, Concord, New Hampshire, and Snoqualmie, Washington. All the dates are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com. Make sure you head on over to get your tickets. Oh, and I'm also coming close to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'll be in Greensburg, Pennsylvania as well. Those dates are all on my website. But if you can't go and meet me, if you can't go and meet me at a live tour stop, what I want you to know is that I'm back here in the office and I'm going to be giving readings on April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So we're almost sold out, you guys. By now, I'm sure you've seen the thousands of readings that I've done online. If you want to join me, it's $22 to join my next online reading. The next date is April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. These are the only readings I will be doing in April online. So make sure you have your spot reserved. Make sure that you reserve your spots or April 1st, April 2nd, April 3rd. During these events, I'm going to be reading as many of you as possible and connecting you with your loved ones in heaven. So the minute that you sign up, I will send you your login information straight to your email, but make sure you're there April 1st, April 2nd, April 3rd, because I can only allow a limited amount of people. February was completely sold out. March is all sold out. And I'm only doing these three readings in April. Again, April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So don't walk. Run to my website right now, meetmattfraser.com, and make sure that you sign up for either an online group reading or a live tour stop. And like many of you do, come to both. Come to both. It's a totally different experience online than it is in person. But what's so amazing is that when you're there, either online or in person, you bring your loved ones to me and you allow me to deliver messages from them to you. So just go to meetmattfraser.com. You can click on tour dates or you can click on online readings. And I hope that you're there because I really hope that I'm able to deliver a message from your loved one in spirit. But you've got to make sure that you reserve your spot right now because once we're sold out, we're sold out. So meetmattfraser.com. If you would like a reading, just like you see on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, all those places, every single person who has gotten a reading from me, those are not private readings, you guys. Those are online group readings. Each person just paid $22, and you can as well. Go to meetmattfraser.com right now to reserve your spot. And while you're here with me, one last look. Here's my upcoming tour schedule. If, if, if you haven't checked it out, take a look at this list. These are the next tour stops on my list where you can come and meet me in person. I hope to give you a hug from heaven. And I really hope that I'm able to help you connect with the loved one that had died. Here's all the tour stops. I hope to see you there because this is so much more than just an event. It's literally a family reunion with heaven. Each is a 90 minute, ex minute experience where I'll be helping you talk to the spirit world. So here's the list right here. And more importantly, trust in the signs, whether I see you online or I see you in person. I can't wait to help you connect with heaven.